This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. One thing I often get asked is, should I use macros or should I use VBA? Well, the answer is not really as straightforward as a yes or a no. Macros are easy to create, particularly in Access, where you simply choose the actions you'd require from a drop list and the parameters that go with that action are offered by default and you can choose the ones that you require. However, they are limited just to the parameters and the actions given to you in those drop lists. Whereas in VBA, you have much wider scope. So it really depends on, do you need that wideness of scope or do you need to be able to create something fairly quickly without having to program? There is the ability to create a macro and then convert it into a piece of VBA that you can then further edit. So for example, if we were to create a simple macro, so create macro, Notice you're restricted to what's in the drop list. You can't write your own code, so to speak. You're restricted to the commands that are available. So I'd like to just open a form. I'm then presented with the parameters for that command. I'd like to open the form test menu. I'd like to view the form. I don't want to do any filtering. Data mode is not applicable because there's no data in that form. And then normal. And then we'll save. Call that CMD. Open menu. OK, close that macro is down here and I can run that at any time. Double click and there's my form. Now, what you might have noticed is that in the design view of a macro is there is a nice little option to convert that macro to Visual Basic. So if I now give that a click, would I like to add error handling to my functions? I would. And any of the macro comments would also be included in the VBA. Convert. Conversion's finished. And then what you'll find is you have a new module here called Converted Macro CMD Open Menu. So it retains the same name as the macro had and has its own module. I can double click to open and I see the function has been created. So it's created a function called CMD Open Menu. Just happens to be the same name I had for my macro. There's a bit of error trapping in there that we'll see later. And there's the simple code. Do command open form, open that form in normal view and normal data access. What you will also notice is that you still have your macro. It hasn't taken that macro and changed into a function and then deleted the macro. Both now exist. Obviously, you'd want to get rid of the macro and retain the VBA. There is one fairly large advantage to having no macros and keeping all the activity in the Visual Basic, and that is that you can password protect your Visual Basic code so that when you finally finish your application, and distribute it to your end users, they cannot then access that code, whereas they can access the macros. So there is a distinct advantage at that point, but until that stage, it's six of one, half a dozen of another as to which has the advantage. Macros are easier because you have the pick list to choose from. VBA is more flexible and gives you much more power. But with this ability to convert your macros to VBA, you can do some of the simpler steps as macros and then simply convert them over into VBA functions and use the VBA as you see fit.